The first Wales. He's gone Wales. Damn you! Pass you! Yes. Anything means forever, ever, hold it, never mind. Oh, I. The reason I'm being sneaky is that the boys don't know that there's a uh, big old kilometre long tunnel coming up. So, part of the greenway, this is a whole disused track, railway track. <gasps> They're looking. They're spying. Dave and I haven't got a clue where we're going. Kat's taken us on a magical mystery tour today. Fingers crossed she's told you guys what's happening because we don't have a clue. Have a clue. We're just following blindly. This is part of the greenway here. Leads all the way up towards Tin Turn, which is where we were going along the River Wye. And at some points in the tunnel, it's almost a hundred meters deep. But the boys don't know about it. They don't know it's going to happen. So I'm just going to try and keep it still because I both know they can absolutely love that. Hello. Hi. This is Kerry. And this is Kat. And, and we, we are, are Tegan in Valhalla. Valhalla. You join us today on a bit of a mystery tour. We're with, with Dave. Little Dave's with us today. Hi, Dave. <laughs> and Kat has brought us over into, I say Wales, but we're in England and Wales, and then England, and then Wales. So we're in the Y Valley. That's why Kerry is uh, very stressed by the fact that sometimes we're in Wales and sometimes we're in England. At the moment, we're in England. Tidenham at the National Diving and Activity Centre. And it's uh, very kind of them. They allow people who are walking this greenway, which is what we're walking now, um, to park in their facility, right at the top near the zip wire area for free. Yep. Um, it's a really cool looking activity park, actually. Yeah, only open at the weekends currently, but it's uh, really, really cool looking. Yeah. It's ever so busy, so it's very popular. So we might worth looking into. At the moment, the boys didn't know, but they seem really excited that we're now going to go through the tunnel now. And this tunnel's not been open for very long and it's also only open between uh, April and September, I think. Um, and it's not open at night either because it has a really good pop bat population. We cannot use torches in here because again, like I said, the bat population, but it does have down lighters. And this is a kilometer long and can at some point reach a hundred meters deep. Wow, okay. So this is an old railway track that's been uh, redone. Fantastic. For cyclists and walkers, part of the Greenway let's, initiative. Let's go and have a look. Woo! Evidence of our batty friends here. Bat droppings are mostly consistent of dried up insects. So we're in the tunnel at the moment and it's super cool. Long, all illuminated with these lovely lights and a uh, bit creepy, bit cool. <laughs> So just left the Tynum Tunnel and that was really cool. That was a nice little treat. So we couldn't film a lot in there because of the light restrictions and we couldn't put our torches or anything on because of the bats. But Dave, wasn't that cool? It was really good, yeah. Yeah, it went on for seemingly forever and it was just a little bit eerie in places as well. And it's just really lovely. And you come out into this, this wooded area, nice big wide track, lots of remnants of the, the railway sleepers, old huts. And things and I think down on our left we have the, the river Y and we'll be crossing that at Tin Turn. And you can tell it's a steam track because of the width of the tracks.
And just through the woods behind me, getting little glimpses of Tintern Abbey, which is in Wales. Um, but yeah, I think you can see the village of Tintern. It's been really enjoyable so far. Lots of green spaces, lots of nature. Just a real treat, really. <sighs> Absolutely gorgeous River Wye. Amazing. <gasps> God, yeah, it's really cool. And here is where it splits England with Wales. So cool. About to head over the bridge into Tintern. Go and have a look at Tintern Abbey. Perhaps have a little something to eat. I'm hungry already. Yes. <laughs> So this bridge was used by the Tin Turn Wire Company. And it's pretty wobbly. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it moves about. So this um, pigeon is partly Welsh and partly English right now. All right, mate. Pigeon. Oh, the first Wales. He's gone Wales. Can I see your papers, please? Yeah, papers, yeah. Uh, sorry, no. <laughs> so this bridge originally built for the wire works in Tintern, a really important part of the industry here, was built in about 1876 and it was out of commission by about 1935. But they were made to promise to keep it as uh, open and looked after for a pedestrian railway. So just coming through Tintern, it's a lovely old village. Lots of history and things to see. Lots of the old buildings have been converted now for modern use. Yeah, it's been lived in for a very long time. And we're heading off now towards the Abbey where I think we're gonna have our first pit stop of the day. Near this place in 1568, brass was first made by alloying copper and zinc. Wow. So I think this is a pretty good place to stop and have a cup of tea and a recharge for a minute, don't you? Yes. I'm hungry. Go. Right guys, we're just gonna finish up our tea and sandwiches and then we're gonna have a little look as best as we can with the Abbey. We're not actually sure you can get in or near it, to be honest with you. So we'll see what we can do. Abbey is just absolutely huge. It was the first ever Cistercian monk abbey in the whole of Wales. Actually, the only second one in the entirety of Britain. So, very special. 1131. Beautiful, absolutely huge. Obviously, damaged and pulled down during the uh, dissolution of the church. Beautiful. Obviously, a huge monastery. A stunning abbey. It really is difficult to get the grandeur of it. But it is huge. Founded by Walter de Clare, the Lord of Chepstow, in 1131. So we've only ventured up this little weird bit now from Tintern just to have a look at these lime kilns here. So this was used from the 1700s 
all up to 19, early 19s. Um, yeah, really cool. I mean, you can only now see the very tips of the kilns, those archways. Uh, it was really important to do it and they had to get the heat up to about a thousand degrees Celsius to break the lime down. And then they would use that uh, for agricultural reasons because it um, improves the soil. They also use it for building. It's obviously been used for building a long, long time. Uh, it was extremely important and a huge industry here because there is so much limestone. So of course it was a, a real quick way to uh, make a lot of money. So we're just heading back down towards the bridge now and we're gonna follow a little path Kat's found. To Brock Weir. Take us down to Brock Weir and then we're gonna start walking a bit of Offa's Dyke. Can't wait. Yeah, the Abbey is fantastic. So sorry we can't get you much closer. I'm in England and he's in Wales. I shall whip over to Wales and see how he's doing. I am now in Wales. The cat is all the way down there in England. Not sure which way we're going now to be honest guys, so I think I better go down there and meet her. So I just called over into England to check on Cat, make sure she's alright, see if she wanted another cup of tea. She's only blooming back in Wales, isn't she? It's Wales. Oh, he's in England. Oh, he's messing me about hopping from country to country. Yes, I'm popping over now, seeing back in England. And we get on with our walk. Stop messing about. Well, I found him back in England. It was good. I found Kat back in England. Well, I came to England to see you. But well, I went to Wales to see you. International travel. So we're just picking the track up again now, heading off towards Offa's Dyke. Brock Weir first. Oh. And then Offa's Dyke. Interesting. Let's get going. Boop. Absolutely giant gunnera here. Biggest I've seen outside of like proper formal garden. Look, there's Kerry to show you how bloody big they are. That is so cool. The circa 1120 weir, this village gets its name from, can still be seen in the shallows under the Brock Weir Bridge. Monks Hall, and this is the old malt house. Yeah. Monks cool. love to make booze, that was their thing. The Monks like, House and the malt house next to each other. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're just trying to pick up the Offers Dyke path yeah, now. Yeah, we will be in a second. I think it's literally just up here. So it's gaining a bit of elevation now, following the Offers Dyke path. Kerry was like, he is King Offa. Couldn't believe it. So, oh. sorry, it's his fault. You're gonna get this now. So, <laughs> King Offa was the King of Mercia. Mercia is England, but not East Anglia, Wessex, or the um, peninsula of Cornwall. None of that was counted, but the rest of it was. And he was quite a warrior. And uh, he was a bit nervous and a bit sick of constantly warring with the Welsh tribes. So he, he decided he wanted an earthworks um, in order to keep an eye on the Welsh tribes. And that was in the uh, mid 700s AD. Post-Roman. Some people believe that quite a lot of the earthworks, which is a bank and ditch bank, obviously on the English side, because it is the, the line between England and Wales, the old, line obviously and some people believe that there is a possibility that it was actually mostly roman some carbon dating has found it older 
almost all right back to the fifth century. So not all of it, but some of it. So interesting, but still people believe it was from King Offa. So. History is hot. When we get into the woods, we'll be able to actually see the bank and ditch. Heading across this field now, up into the woods again at the top. Certainly got us puffing, this caught us off guard, didn't it? <laughs> So from the Weir Bridge that we were at earlier to where we are now on the Offers Dyke Path, it's probably about 150 meters worth of climbing and it's done pretty sharply as well. So you will feel that. Um, we had a little lay down in the field, so, and it's good now. Yeah, we've got the, the shade and the, the shelter of the trees. Here we go, Offers Dyke is a formidable earthwork. Began in, you're right, um, AD 785 by the order Offer, King of Mercia. That's when he was, how long he was king for. That's a long reign actually and stretched for 82 miles roughly along the English-Welsh border. Mercia was a huge Anglo-Saxon kingdom covering most of central England. The dike marked its western frontier, bordering Welsh territory. Originally about 27 metres wide and 8 metres high, it served as a symbol of Offa's great power. This three-mile section is in the care of English heritage. So hopefully we can show you some of the earthworks as we uh, venture in this way. So that's the ditch and embankment and that runs the entire England Wales border. And you know who owned the defensive earthworks because the bank would always be on the defensive side, the owner's side. So we're on the owner's side. Get over there, Welshman! No! Ta -da! <laughs> Damn you! Curse you! Curse you first! Oh, I'll curse you more! Don't you throw things? No, 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 no. Get out of it, Welshie! Ah, 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 This offers dike path. It is so lovely. It's really cool under the trees on a really humid day. It's so beautiful. You have the bank and ditch constantly in sight. This beautiful old woodland. Lots of beaches. So nice. We saw some really old yew trees actually. Um, sort of peppered along what would be the top of the bank. A little bit magic actually. I think uh, we've seen a lot of families as well because um, I guess you can just do this in little bits if you like you can just do small amounts of it and then drop back down fantastic I would like to do a lot more of it wow Kerry's found himself a beautiful tree interesting shape but yeah the yew trees are all through this part of the dike this part of the Offers Dyke path has Obviously had a bit of restoration. It's looking good. Drop still down there. It's 
So this is the Devil's Pulpit, looking back down over the Abbey that we were at earlier. Uh, and it's believed that the devil used to try and lure the monks over to his side, calling them over from this point. It's a stunning vista. Well worth a, a stop if you get a chance as you're coming along the Optostite route. So we've just come past the Devil's Pulpit. Lovely little viewing point. Quite a long route that we're walking today. We're about 10.7 miles into the day's walk. Popular path, popular route. Lots of people out and about enjoying the green spaces this afternoon, which is really lovely to see. Lots of families. So we're just dropping back down now. Still following the path in this lovely woodland. So interestingly, I know that this wood has hazel dormice and uh, I'm on, stood underneath a hazel I find their little hazel nuts have been nibbled of course there are other mice and shrews that will do that but um, obviously it's interesting I like that you know it gives me hope the dormouse population here is pretty good and um, they're very arboreal they spend a lot of their time um, in, the t in the treetops don't come to the ground very often and they use these sort of bridges see this sort of bridging effect from one tree to another this is uh, like their highway and that's why their population became so um, diminished obviously the loss of hazel woodlands for a start but also the loss of this kind of behavior because people started cutting these off over paths for the fear of them falling or hurting someone and that was disastrous for the population of very arboreal mice wow this is a great big hazel coppice here you can see that this whole area used to be a coppice so i'm presuming this has been worked for centuries so it does have an ancient feeling about it it's a very well signposted route lots of little spit offs and other alternate paths you can follow as well and we're still following the offers dyke route at the moment the part we've sort of come down out of the main woodland a few miles on past the devil's pulpit So it's worth mentioning, Kat will put all the details of today's walk down in the description. So please check that out for all the information. So that was the road walking. A little bit of pavement, a little bit of road, not too bad. We are looking out onto the River Severn, which runs into the Bristol Channel. So we're just sort of slowly working our way back towards the activity centre now where we parked the car this morning. We'll show you a little bit of that as we go through it as well because it was a really interesting looking place. Diving, water activities, there was a big zip wire um, and some sort of Halloween scare fest event that they do in October as well. So worth uh, having a little look online for that if that's something you fancy. Yeah, I think we're around the 13 mile mark at the moment been a thoroughly enjoyable day nice unwind and relax come out of the field at the moment we're actually following the tunnel the tunnel is beneath our feet at the moment because even this bit here which is no doubt a partial tunnel is somebody's home and garden so a lot of it's private but it'd be interesting wouldn't it right so we're very nearly back at the car now 
thanks for joining us on today's walk. It's been really interesting. I really enjoyed showing you the Offers Dyke and part of the Greenway. That tunnel I thought was absolutely awesome. Did yeah. you love it? Really good, yeah. Really cool. Yeah, I enjoyed the, the, all the various tea stops along the way as well. Yeah. Seeing the uh, Devil's Pulpit and the Abbey ruins as well was really cool. Yeah, the Abbey was huge. Yeah. I've never seen one so and, and in such good condition. I know, shame we couldn't get around it, but maybe next time. Yeah. So if you have liked today's walk, to like today's video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Drop us a little comment down below. If you're new to the channel, think about clicking that subscribe button and hitting the bell uh, so that you're notified of our next adventure, which yeah. will be very soon. Very. And until then, stay safe and well. And keep enjoying those green spaces. Be good. Bye, Bye guys. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>